I hope in other videos that I've already convinced you about Fresh MVVM, which is a MVVM framework for Xamarin Forms. And in this video, we're going to see how to add dependency injection to all the goodness that was in there already. Before we dive straight into the code, let's have a quick look at the end result, which is from the outside, not very impressive because this is the exact same demo that we've seen in the um, navigation sample, uh, fresh MVVM navigation sample. We can go to a page right here and you will see this message. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? Which is always a good question. So please check if you already did. Um, but now this message is injected through a service in fresh MVVM that we registered in a dependency injection container. Um, so how that is done, let's go check out in Visual Studio. And here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. Um, here you can see the sample that I've been using for the fresh MVVM navigation sample actually, which is a video I've made before. So if you haven't checked that out, I would highly recommend that you watch that first so you know what is going on in the navigation space because that is kind of a prerequisite for the stuff that we are going to see here with the dependency injection. Um, it should pop up on your screen right now or you can find it down in the video description. Um, also, I've got another video on the kind of basics of dependency injection. Um, and I have to keep talking here so that there's a little bit of time in between, but that should pop up on your screen right now, or you can find it down in the video description. I highly recommend watching those two first if you're not sure about what dependency injection um, is exactly. If you do already know, then please just follow me along right in here. Um, so for fresh MVVM, it has a um, dependency injection container, um, an IOC container, inversion of control, whatever you like to call it, um, already built in. It uses tiny IOC. Um, you can use your custom container if that's what you want, so you can install that um, and use that together with fresh MVVM. Uh, but here we are in the main page, so let me quickly go over to what this is actually doing. We've seen some navigation for the view model to view model navigation. Um, and I can go here to the next page, which uh, shows you the have you subscribed to my channel yet? Uh, which if you haven't, now is a good time to do so. Find that subscribe button down there. Um, and here the close button does nothing. Um, it actually hides the label for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, but that is for the go to page modal. Um, so if you open this page in a modal way, you will see the same page, but now it's like popped over and you have to supply your own way to actually close the page because that is how modals work. So if you do the close page, then the modal goes down. Now let's update this little title here because this is the fresh MVVM dependency injection sample. There we go, save it. And with hard reload, you can see it updates automatically on the iOS simulator, also works on physical devices also on Android, also when running on Visual Studio for Windows. So that is some amazing stuff right here. Um, and now actually let's go into our solution. So I've already installed the fresh MVVM package, um, all the things I've set that up. And if we go into our app XAML, app XAML CS, um, you can see that I'm wiring up here in the app. I'm wiring up this, this page. I'm going to resolve the page model. I'm wrapping that in a navigation page. Um, I'm setting a little bit of styling right here. And then I set the main page to this navigation page. Now let's add some dependency injection in here. So um, to, to make this story complete, let's go back to our solution and let's look into our first page model. And here I have this property um, with data binding that is actually showing that um, have you subscribed to my channel yet? So here, go to page. That is what you're seeing here in this label. Now, let's pretend that this is data that should come in from your backend service that you have to do an HTTP call. Um, and you're getting some data back and you want to show that in your application. That is something that you would do through a service or you know whatever naming convention you have, you can use a service, you can use a provider. There's a couple of different like design patterns that you could follow um, or you know just follow your own path and um, come up with some solid naming because naming is not that hard, um, I've heard in software development. Um, so let's just change this. Let me actually copy this string so I have that later. Actually, let me um, cut that so we don't need it here. Um, so there we go. We've taken it out of the first page model and I'm going to go back in my into my solution. I'm going to right click on the shared project and I'm going to add a new folder. Um, this is not at all required, but you know, just to keep a little bit of structure in your project. And I'm going to name this um, services add. And now we have this, this folder services and I'm going to add in that folder a new class. Uh, and I'm going to name that my data service, right? So it, it provides me with some data. 
um, new, there we go. And now I have the my data service. Boom. Awesome. No harm done. So let me implement um, a, a public string um, get message, right? So that's the only thing we're doing here. But this can, of course, you know, this um, returns a string, return this. Uh, but it can also be a collection of things or a complex object or a collection of complex objects. It can be anything you want. And here you can also go out to your um, your backend server, your REST servers to get the data um, and give that back to your page model as we will see in a little bit. Um, so this just gets a simple string to to make you um, see how this, this actually works in like the, the basic example. Um, so let me save that. And now what we need to do is go back to the app XAML CS and I need to register this in um, the container, the, the dependency injection container of fresh MVVM. So I have here the fresh IOC, um, which is a wrapper around the, the tiny IOC just to avoid naming clashes here. Um, and that has, so here you have the method actually to override the container. So you can put something in there, uh, which is your own container, but we are just gonna use the stock one. So we have this container and here you have a couple of methods. So the register and the resolve ones and maybe the unregister, although I never really used it, um, are the ones that are interesting. So with the register, you're putting something in that container so it can resolve that automatically. Um, you can manually resolve with the resolve methods right here if that's what you want. Um, and if you decide that you no, no, no longer need that class anymore, you can unregister it manually as well. But typically whenever you register something, it's there for the, the lifespan of your entire application. But you know, maybe you have some advanced scenario where you could use that. So let us register this thing right here, which is my data service. And I have to add the right using here. So using um, and this weird name that I come up with dot services because I've put it in the services folder. So it's in the services namespace. Um, and then I have to tell this um, how to create an instance of this. So let's create new my data service. There we go. And now we get a new instance. So with this, you provide a new instance. You can play with the constructor parameters if you need to, uh, but you can put in your instance right here. Then actually this, this goes out a little bit because this can be inferred. It knows that you're actually registering the My Data Service, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, so this is actually registered now. Um, and we can go in here to our first page model and I can now say my, uh, whoops, my data service. There we go. And let's call this my data service. Um, and whenever I do the right using, so let's use IntelliSense this time, it will add the using for us here at the top. It will know this my data service. And then I can say my data service dot get message, right? And we want to assign that to this first page method here. So let's just do that and boom. We got the same thing now, but suddenly we lost that dependency. Uh, well, we didn't have a dependency in the first place, but this gets injected automatically because it's going to resolve that page model for us automatically. And it knows like, hey, I have this um, um, dependency injection container. So I'm going to look in there if I have this dependency that you're asking for this, this constructor parameter. And hey, it's there on the list. So let's just put that in there. And that is basically how this works. So if I stop this and run it again, we will see that on the outside, nothing has changed, but we know now on the inside that we have this um, data service that is actually providing this message for us. So here we go, go to page and here you can still see the same message, but now it's not hard coded in this property right here, but we are getting this through this my data service that I only had to register in um, the container, uh, the dependency injection container. And I didn't need to change anything about my page model. It just got injected automatically. Now this works only if you if we go back to this app example CS if you um, do this 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 kind of resolve page model um, or if you um, in the previous video if you're doing the navigation to a new view model if you're going outside of like the fresh MVVM thing and um, are going to navigate to pages or whatever this stops working this only works if you go through the fresh MVVM framework which kind of makes sense right so now I can hear you going, hmm, Gerald, that is pretty interesting. But aren't we supposed to use interfaces with dependency injection? Well, that is a good question. Let me just answer that right here. So let's go back to our screen and um, 
If you want to make things more testable, then definitely you want to use interfaces. But you can definitely do this with concrete um, classes as well. Um, actually, one thing that I didn't really mention is you can also, of course, play with like the um, the lifetime of these um, 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 classes, these registrations. So here we can say like as multi instance. Um, so that basically means each time it's resolved, it will get a new instance. Um, right, so in this case, if I were to also go into our main page model um, right here, and I would do the my data service, my data service right here, I have a typo in there, it doesn't matter. If I would inject it here as well, this would get a different instance than the instance in our first page model. So that is something to be aware of um, if you want to get the same data out of that service. And if you want to, you know, have that HTTP request service, um, it doesn't really need to be the, the, the multiple instances because that's going to take more memory, right? So maybe you want to then have the singleton, but there are scenarios where you want to have multiple instances of a service maybe. Um, so then you can definitely do that as well. Uh, I think if you register a, you should check the fresh MVVN documentation. If you register a concrete type like this, it will get um, automatically the um, as multi instance, uh, but you can override that behavior by adding here the as singleton, and then each injection will get like the same my data service in there. Um, so you have some other things in there for the more advanced scenario, like the using constructor, so you can um, um, provide the constructor parameters this way with strong reference, with weak reference, check out the documentation. You can find that in the video description below on what that is exactly. Um, or, you know, let me know in a comment and I will um, check it out for you, maybe create a little video. So if you do this concrete class, then you will get as multiple instances. But if you want to make things more testable, you are going to use interfaces because then you can easily swap out like the implementation of that interface whenever you're going to do unit tests or maybe UI tests or maybe something like that. Um, so that is actually, you know, not that much of an effort. So let's go back to our my data service. And we're going to make this implement the I my data service. There we go. Um, I'm going to implement this here in this same file. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but you know, typically you would create a separate file, which would have the interface definition. Um, so here we're going to say public interface, I my data service, uh, there we go. And then of course, we need to um, put this uh, method signature in there. We don't need a semicolon here, Gerald. Do you know how to program? Do you even know how to code? Um, no public here. So here we're going to say string get message and this implements it already. Um, so now we can use this interface. So we are not tied to a specific implementation of that interface. So let's go back to our uh, first page model. And now we can change this to the I my data service. Uh, which still does the same. And then for our registration um, in our app XAML CS, uh, we can now say, um, let's just remove all of this. And with the angle brackets, I can say I my data service, and I can say my data service, there we go. And now it will automatically, we don't need to specify an, uh, a concrete instance anymore. Um, so I can actually do that, I think, with, with, with some override here. Um, I can provide my own instance of this class if I have some special needs or whatnot. Um, but I can do this. But whenever you go testing, then you might have like, I don't know, maybe something like if um, um, is unit testing, I don't know, you would probably solve it um, another way. Um, but then you would have like another implementation and else you would have like the real implementation. So here you would have like my mock data service, right? Which will provide you with some mock data. So that's where you go with like the, the unit testing. If you want to know more about that, please let me know in the comments and I will um, find that out for you and make a little video. Um, so there we go. But here we are going to do with with the I my data service. Um, uh, with this, uh, whenever you have a parameterless constructor, it will find out automatically um, how to instantiate that class um, and inject it for you. So again, if I just stop running this and I run this again, um, on the outside, we're going to see the exact same thing. So it's kind of a boring demo. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of super cool if you um, wrap your head around what is going on here, and how much power this gives you because there we go, we still have that same message that is pretty cool, right? So um, and I, again, I didn't change anything um, in my page model, well, except for it accepts now um, an interface. And of course, you know, we can um, 
kind of copy this, do do this with another service. So let's make this the I whatever service. Uh, there we go. I'm not going to actually implement this. Uh, this is going to be the what ever service and then if we go to our first page model and we decide like hey we need this service here as well uh, because we are not just going to do calls to the back end but we are also going to do i don't know something with caching um, and the whatever service has to do with caching i can just say hey i whatever service uh, whatever service uh, and then it will automatically inject it here as well um, and you can use it here of course what i didn't really show you is you can also now um, get this whatever you get in here you can put this in a private i my data service here my uh, data service and then you can use it throughout the rest of your class as well right you can just make it a field in your class and you can reference it from wherever you want so that is how to um, use dependency injection together with fresh mvvm I think this video might have gone a little bit fast if you don't fully grasp the th concept of dependency injection. Um, so like I said at the beginning, maybe go check out the uh, videos on um, Fresh MVVM, the navigation sample, so you know where this code um, originally came from. And of course, also check out the video I have on kind of the intro to dependency injection, so you know what a container is, what constructor injection is, um, so you know what is going on here. But if you've got those concepts uh, under your belt, then now you know how to use dependency injection together with fresh MVVM, which is makes it pretty powerful. Um, and I don't think I think there, I'm going to make one more video on fresh MVVM. Maybe if you're watching this, um, then it's already out there, which is passing data between view models. Uh, or page models, I, I use those uh, terms um, kind of fluent uh, be, be between the things because the page model and the view model is kind of the same thing. You can use both names if that's what you want. Um, so you can how you can pass data from one to the other. And I think that we already have a pretty complete picture of how to use fresh MVVM in your Xamarin Forms application. Now, if you want to see something else, as always, please let me know in the comments or reach out in any way you can. There's also a link on the Discord server down in the video description below. Feel free to join that so we can build a little community and discuss some fun things or also some Xamarin Inform stuff, .NET MAUI stuff, all the stuff basically. If you've liked this video, please click that little like thumbs up to make it show up in the algorithm of happiness of YouTube so other people can benefit from it as well. Maybe subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Go check out if that subscribe button is lit up. Ding that little bell so you'll be notified of new content automatically and I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.